Van Halen was outrageous in every way, and so was Eddie Van Halen's signature guitar, the Frankenstrat. This guitar was built by Eddie himself, including the iconic striped paint job. Sadly, Eddie died on October 6, 2020, at the age of just 65. Fortunately, Eddie's music and his legendary guitar will live on for generations to come. I decided to build a Benchrest rifle as a tribute to Eddie Van Halen, as I've been inspired by his guitar playing, his energy, and himself as a person. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. It's done. My first Benchrest rifle build, and when I set out to build this rifle, I was looking around at what other people were doing in the Benchrest community, and I thought, wow, this is some outrageous, over-the-top, outlandish stuff. We're talking about cheetah prints, uh, bowling ball looking figured stocks and high gloss paint. We're talking about fantasy airbrush paint jobs, large American flags. I thought I need to do something loud and crazy. And when I thought about that, the first thing that came to mind was Eddie Van Halen's iconic Frankenstrat. So this builds on my own personal history. When I was 16 years old, I was hell bent on learning auto body prep and paintwork. In fact, I was so determined, I opened up the Yellow Pages. That's right, we had Yellow Pages at the time. I called every auto body shop within about a 20 mile radius of where I was living at the time. Nobody needed help except for one body shop. I got the job, I started prepping, I worked my way up. I did my first complete professional paint job on a Toyota Supra in late 1990 when I was 17 years old. This was a major accomplishment and I learned a ton from the guys that I work with and we had some really premium equipment as well. Before we get into the specifics for this paint job, let me briefly recap the machining I did for the barrel work and the work on the mill for the stock. So this build started with the barrel work and I've got a complete article and video covering that process. We've got a BAT Model B action. We've got a Krieger barrel. This is chambered in 65 by 47 Lapua. Not a super popular bench rest cartridge, but this rifle is my test bed rifle. I wanted to build this to do precision shooting, to take all of the shooter factors, all of the rifle factors out of the equation, at least as much as I could. So I chambered this barrel on the Precision Matthews PM14 40GT lathe with treble reamers from Germany, super, super top shelf stuff. Then came the work on the stock. This is the Wheeler Accuracy LRB stock, which is manufactured by Macmillan Composites. And what it comes as is kind of raw. The fiberglass has the gel coat on the outside, and it's basically a solid hunk up here where you're gonna cut the barrel channel, where you're gonna do the inletting work for the receiver area. And that's cut a little bit big because you're gonna follow that up with epoxy bedding. I used Devcon F2, which is an aluminum powder, and got everything settled into place. Did a bunch of fit and finish machining to get everything just perfectly how I wanted it to be. That was the build so far. Then came a bit of research. I did a bunch of viewing online, I did a bunch of reading about Eddie Van Halen, his iconic Frankenstrat guitar, and how this evolved. It's a pretty interesting story. He basically took a bunch of essentially aftermarket Fender Stratocaster parts. I don't know if there's a single Fender part on there separate aftermarket body, separate aftermarket neck, and so on and so forth. Put this thing together, initially it was black and white striped. And it was a pretty cool paint job, but Eddie Van Halen evidently was very <laughs> kind of upset with how many people were copying him. So one day in 1977, I think it was late 1977, he was visited in his backyard and he did this iconic paint job with Schwinn bicycle paint. I would give anything to be there to see that. So understanding the story helped me to be better inspired with regard to how I was gonna lay out this paint job. Now, my painting setup is not exactly what I had at that professional body shop that I worked for. I have great plans for a paint booth for Cerakote and other types of mostly rifle related coatings work here at the shop. But 
I have, for the time being, what I would call kind of a third world setup. I'm cleaning my paint gun out in the dirt with a cardboard uh, mat laid out on the ground. I've got my lacquer thinner going. I used a tripod that I had originally manufactured for cooking over a fire to suspend the rifle stock. Again, better plans for that. I'm using a Astro Euro Pro HVLP gun. This is not a super expensive gun. This is a 1.4 millimeter tip. If you click on that first link in the video description, I'll link to it uh, on Amazon. It has given me great results. And if you watch my Warner Swayze number no. two vintage metal lathe, this is a World War II era metal lathe refinishing story on making with metal. Uh, I used this same gun for that work. I'm using Omni by PPG. This is a base coat, clear coat, acrylic urethane, and I'm using a two-part epoxy primer. You've got the primer base, and then you've got the catalyst. This is really, really good stuff. It is not cheap. <laughs> I spent a fair bit of money at the auto body supply store, but it is really, really important to use the right products if you want an automotive style paint job like this that's gonna last for the duration. So that's a bit of a background on the components and the research work that I did. Next, it was time to start the painting prep. A common saying at the auto body shop is a good paint job is really all in the prep work. You can't get a really good result if you're not willing to put in the time to get things ready. And where I started with this rifle stock paint job was to use glazing putty. This is kind of like Bondo, but it's really, really fine. It doesn't leave the voids and the little air bubbles like you get with Bondo, and you also can't put it on as thick, but I didn't need to. The major portion of the work there was the barrel channel. When I did the inletting on the barrel channel, it leaves open pores on the fiberglass in place there where the channel was cut. And so I formed a, a special spreader out of a, a Bondo kind of putty knife kind of a thing and conformed that to the exact radius of this barrel channel inlet, spread on the glazing, and then guide coated that. This is dry guide coat. It is kind of like black paint. It's something that you fog over an area where you're gonna do some sanding to see how far you need to go. And basically you stop sanding when you stop seeing black dots or lines, any evidence of, of that guide coat. So I spent a while with a tubular piece of aluminum and sandpaper guide coating, multiple coats of the glaze. I also glazed other details on the rifle where I needed a little bit of filler to fill imperfections or anything like that. And again, the result in the end is well worth the effort here. It is a lot of painstaking work and it takes a lot of time, but if you can lean into that and enjoy it, you really feel that satisfaction feeling of craftsmanship. Then it was time to go with the first coat of epoxy primer. And I was using a small gun. I had to take it back to the auto body shop. Didn't work <laughs> super well. So, but I got the first coat on, it was probably two or three coats actually total. Guide coated that and wet sanded with 400 grit paper. This is where you're looking at your orange peel, you're knocking that down, you're looking at taking out scratches. Epoxy primer isn't good for filling really large scratches or other imperfections, but this is kind of a little bit further along. It was smoother to start with, so that worked pretty good. I put on the second coat of the epoxy primer, actually the second coatings, had I think three coats total, with the Euro Pro. And this went much better. I was able to lay it down really heavy, so that's good for filling, and then it lays a little bit uh, flatter, less orange peel. Guide coated that and wet sanded it. Again, I'm really taking my time. I'm using a squeegee as a backer. 3M makes a good rubber squeegee. It gives a nice flat sanding surface. I've got a foam pad that I'm using, and then I'm also sanding by hand where you've got different types of compound curves and things like that where you really just need kind of the contour of your finger to get that sanded. At this point, the prep work is done. Now comes the fun part, and that is the paint work. I had masked off my inletting area. You don't want any paint where your receiver was bedded to the stock because even a thickness of paint is too much material and we've already established that perfect mating surface 
the receiver and the cradle, which is that epoxy bedding surface. So from the priming, I had masked all that off. I took that off. I didn't want too much of a buildup on the masking. So I remasked that and masked off some of the other, uh, the bedding on the trigger guard in letting. I masked off all the other parts that weren't going to be red. Now I started with red. I, I probably should have finished with red. I think that's what Eddie Van Halen did. It all turned out in the end, but basically if you tape over a previous coat of white and or black and then hit it with the red, there's a little bit less work for the masking. I learned that a little bit later. Nonetheless, I saw a red background and I started with the red base coat. The base coat is a urethane. It uses a reducer. I think that was mixed one to one, if I remember correctly. I laid down the red. It laid down really nice with this Astro Euro Pro gun. I think I did three coats total, and then I allowed that to dry. I did a little bit of spot wet sanding on that just to remove any areas where there are imperfections, and then proceeded to get ready to do the detailed masking for the white stripes. And this I used this is vinyl tape, 3M quarter inch vinyl tape. This is what you use in a professional body shop context for striping and other details, things like that. A two-tone paint job. It gives a really nice crisp line. It's really easy to do curves and to follow contours, that kind of thing. So I used a razor blade and cut out all of the areas perfectly for where these white stripes cross over each other and got ready to lay down the white base coat. So I did a few coats of the white base coat. I unmasked it. I wasn't completely happy with how things looked, where some of the intersections of the tape were. So I did a little bit of touch up hand painting there. Then it was time to do the detailed masking for the black base coat. And again, this was very similar to the white stripe areas of masking, but this time at smaller areas, I ran a couple stripes along the top and along the bottom. That's a little bit different than what Eddie Van Halen did. But again, this is EVH inspired. It's not intended to be a direct copy. So I did the black base coat and got that uh, all unmasked. One note, it has been 30 years since I've been in the auto body industry. Do not use blue tape. <laughs> I didn't use it around anything. You know, this is the blue painter's tape like you'd use on your house. I was kind of masking off larger areas with that, and it turns out that these paints can kind of attack through the, bleed through the, the blue tape, and that wasn't good in a couple of areas. Not a huge crisis, but this green tape works really, really well. That in conjunction with the vinyl blue tape. Really, really good stuff. Again, 3M in both cases. So I did a few more touch-ups and got ready for the clear coat. This is, this is when things really, really start to look good because you're covering up all those masked transitions between the striping and the background. And this Omni Clear lays down really, really nice. The key thing I focus on when I'm doing any kind of coatings application is you've got to see the reflection of a light on the surface. This gives you visual feedback and you're gonna know exactly how much material to put down. I'm running static air pressure and then you're controlling the fluid flow with the trigger and always going in a controlled pattern. You don't want to do this, you know. I hate seeing that on home improvement shows. <laughs> that is not how you paint. But when you can see that reflection of light on the clear coat or the base coat or whatever it is you're throwing down, you can get this really, really nice finish. And this clear, it really just flowed really nicely and gave a really, really really nice finish. Now I did have a couple areas that I needed to touch up. So the next day I went and I wet sanded a couple very, very small areas. We had a little bit of an issue with air pressure. We had turned off the compressor for filming and that caused a little bit of a buildup in one area. Not a problem. I knocked it down with uh, some 600 paper and then went over that with 1500 grit paper and then did a little bit of polishing. Uh, it, in this case with the drill, so such a small area with foam backer pads and rubbing compound and stuff like that. I already said painting is the fun part, but I feel like the final unmasking is just as fun. Everything was dried, my polishing was done, so I proceeded to very, very carefully take off the masking from all of the base coat and the clear coat operations. 
and I was extremely happy with how clean the lines were, especially around the receiver inletting area. This is a little bit different than masking I've done for you know auto paint jobs and, and things like that, and it gave me a really nice crisp edge. Everything fit really nice. I have one slight touch up to do here where the bolt goes back because the caulking piece uh, needs just a touch more clearance. So I'm gonna clearance that a little bit and do a little bit of uh, white touch up paint. What you can also see here is a preview of the complete rifle with optic. I've got the Citron S3 here. This is available at Creedmoor Sports. This is kind of a little bit of a preview. It's not even completely installed. This is just kind of finger tight. But this is the final dry fit of the rifle. I'm considering uh, epoxy bedding the bottom half of the rings like I did on my six dasher build. That worked out really, really good. And this scope has a fine cross hair with a very, very tiny aiming dot in the middle. That's gonna be really good for this bench rest shooting. The anticipation is absolutely killing me. As you've seen in the progression of these stories, I put so many hours and so much work into this build. I cannot wait to shoot this thing. I even got special Edgewood bags. Edgewood has a rear bag that is custom tailored for the LRB stock and I got a bag for the Sinclair front bench press that I'm using that has a four inch four end width to it. This is going to be a totally, totally killer setup. And I would hope that if Eddie Van Halen could see this rifle that he would feel honored by what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm not trying to steal any glory from him. I just think he's a cool guy. He completely changed the game with guitar. He figured out that paint job that has inspired me visually and personally. This is really, really cool stuff. So, happy with the build. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because I've got the shooting videos coming up. We're gonna break this thing in. We're gonna get the scope installed. We're gonna do some low development. Cannot wait. And here's what I wanna know is what do you think of this crazy paint job and are you shooting a bench rest rifle what does your paint job look like drop a comment and we'll start a discussion that concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up i hope you liked this video if you did please give it a big thumbs up also make your voice heard if you have something to say please drop a comment make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up and finally Flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.